Morning. All right, fresh new week, fresh new concept. It is transition week. We categorize it uh, as, a, as a deload week or um, a less volume, less intensity. You're still gonna get a full body. It's still gonna be intense. You know how we do it over here, but it's gonna be a lot less than conditioning week especially, and then it's gonna be a lot different than the other weeks. Not a lot, it's a combination of all the weeks, but um, I'll get into the concept in a second for the work period, but mobility is gonna be hip swings and pigeon and frog stretch. So 10, front and back. And then you're gonna go 10 left and right. And then face the wall for that lateral. Hit forward. And swing left and right. We're gonna head into that pigeon stretch. Oh, walk out to a high plank position. Right leg right up. Stack the hips, press into the floor, open up that right side body, and then bring that knee in, and then bring it across your body. Those of you who don't know what a pigeon stretch is, it's gonna stretch out your glutes, hamstrings, lower back. I think everybody knows what a pigeon stretch is. Ideally, that front leg, I mean, to get the most out of it, I shouldn't say ideally, because I struggle with getting that myself. So, knee, hip, ankle, if you watch a good flexible yogi, they have a nice 90 degree angle with that. I struggle with it. I got tight hips. What? If you can, fold over at your waist, drop your elbows to the floor. Try to keep that back leg straight, even if you have to lift it off the ground. Mm. That's right, so about a minute. Go back into that high plank position or pike position. Mm. Switch sides. Left leg up and around. Oh, I'm knocking into shit over here. What am I doing? Oh my god. Head into that left side, guys. Oh, bring that left leg up and around through. Try to get that 90 degree angle. Hip, knee, ankle. Even if you have to manually pull that ankle up and press that back leg back. Not feeling the stretch, move your body, position your body so you can feel the stretch in your glutes, maybe even lower back, piriformis, and then fold over at your waist if you can get into that kneeling or uh, elbow position. Try to breathe through it, don't hold your breath. Get that oxygen flowing. Mm. I'm gonna sit about a minute. You're looking about 40 seconds so far. We got 20 seconds left or so, and then we'll move on. back into that pike position. And if you look, we're gonna head into a frog stretch. So, drop down to your knees. Open up your ankles, or open up your feet so your feet are facing outward. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
and like this. Side profile view here. Keep your knees in line with your ankles. Hips are pushed back, and then you're. You can either go down to your elbows, or you can stay into your stay in your hand position and press your hips back. But open up your knees so they're wider than your hips, and then press your hips back. I don't have much range of motion, man. My hips are tight, but it's a great stretch for inner thigh, hip flexor. Find that 7 out of 10 leg stretch level, or I don't want to say pain level, uncomfortable level. Hold that position, you try to breathe through it. You can drop down to your knees, press, I'm sorry, drop down to your elbows and press your elbows into the floor so you can push your hips back a little further. Mm. This stretch. Come forward a little bit, guys. Give yourself a little bit of reprieve and then go back into it for another 15 20 seconds. Push those hips back. All right, warm up. Easy breezy this week. Three rounds, two exercises. Take your time with it. First one, inchworms. Hold over at your waist, try to keep those legs straight. Walk yourself out to a high plank. From here, tippy toes, bring your hips up. Bring your feet to your hands, and then walk yourself back out to a high plank position, okay? Every time you get to this position, stop there. Every time you get to this position, stop here. Feel that stretch. Let these exercises get their, get their work in. Five of those. Next up, lateral band walk. The little small little mini band. Right below your knees. Shoulder width stance. Think about rotating your hips out, activating your outer glutes. Half squat, mid squat position. And you're walking, taking a big giant step, trying to keep that resistance on the outer thigh. Okay, take your time with it. Don't let that band come any closer than shoulder width. You're always rotating outward, firing up the glutes. Okay, 15 each side. Five inchworms, 15 lateral band walks. Three rounds. So it's a build off of last week's power week, or last month's power week. Um, no, damn, that was this month already, holy shit. But with less intensity, less reps, and overall more of a deload week. That's what the purpose of this week is. You can't go 95 mile, miles an hour all the time with intensity. I don't believe at least. Then again, the fuck do I know with all this shit? But here's the deal. Here's how we're doing it. <clears throat> it's gonna be basically three, two, three exercises. The first exercise is gonna be a split into a unilateral movement. That's your skill work for the week. Every day has one. Okay, skill progression. A, the A's. The B's are gonna be the opposing muscle groups or opposing joint function. And then C is gonna be a mobility drill. That's gonna be acting like an exercise, actively resting. Okay, so you can get some more mobility in, and you're still gonna get, obviously, a good cardio session in without being super intense. So, your exercise today, RDL, Romanian deadlift. One leg at a time, working on balance, Stability, coordination, mobility, all that fun stuff. And also patience for you, those of you who like to rush through exercises. Okay, so we know what an RDL is, right? Hip hinge, flat back, right? So one leg, no different. Still trying to keep those hips, I'll give you a front view first. Still trying to keep those hips square. My left leg is my working leg right now. My right leg is my balance leg. And that left leg is gonna do the hinge. My back's still gonna stay straight. My hips are still gonna stay square. I'm gonna press into the floor with my left leg and bring that right one up. Guys, if you take your time with this, it's gonna be more work than any other week without the intensity, okay? Good for it, good for, the, good for you guys. 
here, right back to center. Try not to let that leg come down. Obviously, if you have to, go for it. But the goal is to make that work, that leg work the whole entire set. It's only 10 reps. Once you're done with 10, shake it off. Go back to the other side, right? Left leg now is, a, is the balanced leg. Right leg is the working leg. Folding over, trying to keep my hips square. Try not to do this. That's not really, that's allowing your body to do what it wants to do. Your work comes into play by trying to keep those hips square. Now, right back to balance. Okay, so this is gonna be working extra super duper hard. And obviously your core. Left, right, or whatever your non-dominant side is first. You're starting with 10 and then going to the other side. Cool? That's A for today. B, opposing muscle group, opposing joint function, scissor kicks. We're doing 10, or sorry, 20. You guys can see me? So scissor kicks are here. Exhale up. So try not to let your shoulder blades touch the floor. Try not to let your heels touch the floor. So you're hovering basically the whole time in this hollow rock, in your scissors. Reaching, clapping. I can't hear each clap, but I want you guys to clap. It forces you guys to reach forward and get that full extension or full flexion, okay? 20. Uh, we're gonna start with 20 each side. So left, right, one, left, right, two, left, right, three, all the way to 20, okay? That's exercise B. Exercise C is going to be a glute bridge with a reach. Okay, so we're still activating our glutes, still keeping it in the, the lower body dominant family, but we're also gonna bring our upper body involved. So here, tuck that butt underneath, flatten your lower back, bridge up, now you're gonna reach in the opposite direction. So, this way, bridge, squeeze the glutes. Right hand all the way to my left as far as I can go while keeping my hips up. And then back down, keep that bridge position. And all the way to the other side. Okay, now once you're done, drop. And then do it again. Drop up, one, one, and then drop. Okay, try to keep your glutes activated the whole time and stretch it out. It's not a race this week. Please, take your time with it. Get the mobility in. A1, A2, B, rest. A1, A2, C, rest. Rinse and repeat at least twice. We'll see how much time we have, but at least, at least twice, okay? All right, let me see if I can make this as simple as possible. In six minutes, the first six minutes of your workout, of your finisher, is going to be three exercises. As many reps as possible, as many rounds as possible. First exercise, butterfly sit up. Feet together, hands back, big exhale on the way up. Try to press your knees out as you roll up into your sit up. Five reps. Jump squats. Ten. Plank walkouts. High plank position. Squeeze your glutes. Keep your core nice and tight. Walk your hands out to your limit. And then walk yourself back. That was two reps. Every time you come out and in is a rep. You're doing five. Okay? So for six minutes, you're doing as many rounds as possible. When six minutes is up, you're going to pick one of those three exercises and we're going to do, I think, a Tabata. 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. That's going to be the second half of your finisher. Tabata, pick your exercise. Pick your exercise. Out of those three, I'm going to set the clock for a Tabata rest work period. That means you're working for 20 seconds and you're resting for 10. We're going to sneak... Uh, four minutes in If you guys are okay with that four more minutes of work pick one of those three exercises. It could be any one of them Cool, so you can either just do sit-ups just do jump squats or just do plank walkouts 
It's gonna be 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. 